Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I wanted to share some thoughts on how to deal with addiction in the Muslim family. Many Muslim families may not want to face the fact that unfortunately this is the reality that we are living in. And if we try to close our eyes or deal with it in a non-research based method, then this will not help. In fact, it might hurt the situation even worse. There are so many people that I know that are going through this problem. And when a person is addicted, uh, that person may also, may hardly actually be there in their own body. The person you're dealing with is someone completely different. However, it is a very difficult situation for the family of that person to deal with them. And if they can learn and which is a difficult thing to persevere in uh, dealing with that person in the right way, they can possibly save his life. But if they deal with him the wrong way, the traditional way, which is to grab that person, give him a slap and yell at him and scream at him and say, what's wrong with you? Why don't you stop doing this? Uh, you know, you are you are doing this on purpose and you have the choice to stop to say all of these type of things it will actually not help that person but actually it might take the life of that person believe me when i say this that when you are trying to shame that person into stopping this they will actually react most likely by going and taking drugs even more than they're already taking and actually might kill themselves by doing an overdose so my dear brothers and sisters, please pay attention to what I'm sharing with you and understand that addiction is a coping behavior. When a person has stress in their life, they deal with it in different ways. Some people eat too much, some people sleep too much, some people read a lot, some people work so much, they don't want to deal with whatever the problem that exists in their life, maybe it's a problem at home. So they are working all day, every day, they are never taking days off, even when they are off, they will find ways to work on that day, because there is something missing. So uh, addiction is a coping behavior, to understand this uh, is critical, because in order to fight addiction, we need to figure out what were the stresses in the life of this person that caused them to go to a, drugs in the first place or alcohol in the first place and how we can try to reduce those stresses as a family in order to help that person, in order to help that person. The most likely time that addiction begins is around teenage years, although it can begin at any time. However, teenage years are difficult because in that time, developmentally a person's uh, personality and character and um, you know basically that person is full of motivation to do new things while the breaks on doing things is or have not yet developed so their engine is in full swing but their brakes have not yet developed and that's why you will see teenagers they'll stay up all night and they'll do that night after night they will party hard they'll play all day and they will not know that hey this can hurt them this they will not realize because what we would you know, what we are calling in simple language breaks to put stop on what you're doing in order to rest in order to ponder over are you doing good or bad this part comes later du during their 20s uh, also, it's important to understand that the people who are addicted already, it's very difficult for them to stop. In fact, it may not even be possible for them to just stop. These are, uh, there might be some anecdotal um, studies out there or anecdotal stories that somebody just stopped. Uh, but hard drugs, heroin, cocaine, and similar things, uh, they basically create a physical dependence. So when a person just stops, they actually go into withdrawal. Their body is in pain and they're going through chills and they have a miserable life. And uh, this person will do anything in order to just get that drug, in order to stop these withdrawal symptoms. So, um, and then on top of that, doing the drugs, basically uh, it intoxicates the mind. And one of the things that intoxication does is that it takes away the decision-making ability of that person. So when someone says to an addict, why don't you just stop? Don't you know that this is bad for you? You will lose your family, you will do this, you know, this will happen and that will happen. This is not actually being processed in that person's mind due to the effect of those drugs. So please understand that doing these things will not help at all. 
Um, also, a person who is addicted may actually develop an underground lifestyle and illegal behavior might result. They'll start to steal things, they'll start to you know, hide away from people, they'll hang out uh, outside the house most of the time so that they could do their drugs. And this is obviously dangerous for them for multiple reasons. Number one, they could actually engage in illegal behavior and get arrested and go to jail, which is not something that going to, that's going to help them because believe it or not, uh, drugs are available outside in the streets. Drugs are also available in the jail itself. And they will not be able to, you, a person should not think that if they get arrested and they're put in a cell, they will have no access to, to drugs. This is uh, very far from reality. Uh, please, again, uh, as I mentioned, the tough love doesn't help. Uh, being cruel, being mean, being yelling at them, you know, maybe even physically beating that person, it will not help them at all. In fact, it may hurt them because once again, you're pushing them back towards the stress that perhaps was the reason for their addiction to begin in the first place. Punishment doesn't fix addiction. If punishment fixed addiction, then people would not have addiction because we have lots of punishments for people who engage in uh, drugs and alcohol. Uh, you know, if they, people who are uh, involved in driving under the influence, they get in trouble, but it doesn't necessarily help them to get out of these issues. Uh, what can help, this is the important point, what can help is to show them hope. Uh, some kind of hope that a person can change is actually something that will help them uh, understand that the stresses that I had before and the stresses that I have now, the support that's around me, my family and my friends are saying, hey, come on, give us your hand. We will hold on to you and we will bring you out of it. So the message of support is one of the best things that you could do for them. So if you see a person, even they are, may, maybe they are shooting up drugs in front of you uh, and they're high, you tell them and whenever there are moments where you feel like, okay, they're not so intoxicated right now that they know what's going on, tell them, you know what, we are there for you. What can we do to help you? And show them love, show them kindness. Uh, being kind, being supportive. And also, one of the things that you can do, in fact, um, you know, some countries like Portugal and Canada have done this, where they actually said to the people who were shooting drugs, they said, look, we have this place, you can come here and we have clean needles, you can come and do clean needles. We have heroin, which is clean and pure, and it is not adulterated with anything else. So come and get this heroin and shoot it up yourself, because in this case, at least we can protect you from getting blood-borne diseases from sharing needles with other people. Also, we can protect you from uh, uh, smoking or, or, you know, taking on some heroin or um, uh, heroin or crack, which will actually, it's mixed with other things which can actually uh, kill you and they are so dangerous for you. So actually, I know it's a very difficult thing for a person to understand, but if you can give this person more time to live, by protecting them from overdosing and by protecting them from uh, getting diseases by sharing needles, you actually have more hope of saving them. If you don't do that, then the person who's shooting up drugs with dirty needles, with um, shared needles, a person who is just buying drugs off the street, they could actually literally they could die any day because they could something could come that is laced with something else and they could actually die from that so uh, by being supportive by actually trying to pr pr provide a bubble for them in order for them to continue to do what they're doing which is very difficult for us to say but in a safe way it actually does not prolong addiction and to give them respect and say you know what well you know this is your choice and respecting them for that at that time giving them that uh, thing that okay you know what they're not looking at me as some homeless bum who's a drug addict but they're actually looking at me like a person 
they respect me. This might actually help them to break away from their addiction and to come back to normal life. The goal here with all of these things, which are very difficult to do, I know for many people, is to save the life. If you can save the life of that person, you can deal with the addiction. But you cannot get a person who is already dead to break off of his addiction because he's dead. You can't get him back. There's nothing you can do anymore. So the method that works that research shows is what's called harm reduction which is we can't stop a person from doing drugs, but what we can do is remove the harm, reduce the harm as much as possible, so that way, and to show them, uh, show them hope in their life so that they could come out of that. So uh, please, if you want to help someone in your family, if you want to see this person alive, try to give them motivation to break away from their addiction. Try to give them motivation. Uh, and there are different ways, but you know, research shows, for example, there are two uh, drugs which are actually opioid drugs themselves. They're called uh, buprenorphine and methadone. These two drugs basically provide a person with their physical dependency that they're on. Uh, they will take care of those withdrawal symptoms, but that person is not intoxicated. They are not necessarily high. So they can go to work. They can have a normal life until slowly but surely down the road, you can actually help them break away from that as well. However, it's very important for us to understand that being tough on them, be yelling at them and screaming at them is not going to help them. What's going to help them is to be kind and supportive and try to reduce the harm that they are putting themselves in the way of. And if we can get a doctor to, pre to prescribe for them uh, these drugs that I mentioned, which is bu uh, buprenorphine and methadone, uh, then these are actually tested drugs and research drugs that help a person fight drug addiction and to be able to live a normal life. So uh, just imagine this. If a person is going 100 miles per hour in a certain direction, you cannot make them turn around all of a sudden. The first step is to have them slow down, just like we hit the brakes on our cars, slow down, come to a very slow speed, maybe 5 miles per hour, 10 miles per hour, and then we can make a U-turn. If you try to make a U-turn at 100 miles per hour, if you try to force someone to make a U-turn at 100 miles per hour, what's going to happen is that that car is going to flip over and that person is likely going to die. So if that's what you're trying to force your brother or sister or mother or father or son or daughter to do, then you're basically pushing them towards their own death. And just imagine, would you be happy if you saw them dead? It might be easy to say at this time that, you know what, I'm going to be relieved. And I've heard this from a mother about her own son that I'm going to be relieved when he dies. But trust me, you're not going to be relieved. No one, human beings are not uh, strong enough to deal and to, to face the death of their own loved one in that way. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect all of our brothers and sisters who are uh, unfortunately caught up in this quicksand. This is a quicksand. This is a thing which is pulling them down. And the best thing we can do is to give them our hand and say, you know what, I'm here whenever you want. I'm here to hold your hand and pull you out and give them hope. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, bring shifa to these people and understand that this is a medical problem that has to be dealt with in a certain way. It is not simply uh, the problem that a person is making the wrong choice. Maybe they initially made the wrong choice when they started that drug, but now it is really beyond their own control. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Jazakum Allah khair.